Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about the pupillary light reflex which have got two components that is the direct light reflex and the indirect or the consensual light reflex. So when the light is directed into the eye, the pupil undergoes a change in the size reflexly to improve the depth of the focus. So clinically, the light reflex is elicited by shining a torchlight into the eye while a patient is seated in a dark room and the pupillary responses are recorded. The pupillary light reflex is uh, when the beam of light is shown on the eye, there is reflex constriction of the pupil in both the eyes and that is called as the pupillary light reflex. The two components of the pupillary light reflex include the first one being the direct light reflex, which is the constriction of the pupil of the eye in which the light is shown is called as the direct light reflex. That is, if you shine the light in the left eye, there is constriction of the pupil of in the left eye. That is called as the direct light reflex. The second component of the light reflex is the indirect or the consensual light reflex where the constriction of the pupil occurs in the other eye which is not directly stimulated by the light. This is called as the consensual light reflex. That is the light is shown in the left eye and the constriction occurs in the constriction of the pupil occurs in the right eye. That is called as the indirect or the consensual light reflex. So coming to the pathway of the direct light reflex, um, we have uh, the light is shown onto the left eye and the, fib the information is carried by the optic nerve. So the optic nerve fibers carry the impulses and uh, via the optic chiasma, optic tract, the fibers enter the midbrain via the brachium of the superior colliculus and terminate in the pretectal nucleus. From this nucleus, the second order neurons project to the edinger vespal nucleus. And from the edinger vespal nucleus, the preganglionic fibers pass through the oculomotor nerve to the ciliary ganglion. The postganglionic fibers travel via the short ciliary nerves to the sphincter pupillae muscle and the contraction and causing its contraction. So contraction of the sphincter pupillae muscle results in constriction of the pupil on the same eye and that is called as the direct light reflex. Now let us see the pathway of the indirect or the consensual light reflex. So from the pretectal nucleus, the neurons project to the contralateral or opposite side edinger vespal nucleus. And from here, the fibers pass via the preganglionic and the postganglionic fibers causing the contraction of the sphincter pupillae muscle causing constriction of the pupil in the opposite eye. And this is the pathway for the indirect or the consensus with light reflex. Now this slide shows the uh, pathway in the flowchart uh, um, of both the direct and the indirect light reflex in a nutshell. So you can see in direct uh, light reflex, the light is shown in the, you can see the light is shown in the left eye and uh, it causes the constriction of the pupil in the left eye. This is the direct light reflex. And in case of the consensual light reflex, the light is shown in the left eye and constriction of the pupil occurs in the right eye. This is the consensual light reflex. The next slide traces the pathway showing the order of neurons, afferent and the efferent, and the components of the reflex pathway. So the receptors for the light reflex are the rods and the cones, which are present in the retina. They are the photoreceptors. And the ones which are shown in red, the neurons, are the afferent pathway, which include the optic nerve, the optic chiasma, and the optic tract. And the center is the pretectal nucleus in the midbrain. From the pretectal nucleus, the fibers project to the edinger vespal nucleus of both the sides. And from the edinger vespal nucleus starts the efferent pathway, which are shown in blue and green, which are the preganglionic and the postganglionic fibers, which include the edinger vespal nucleus, the oculomotor nerve, the ciliary ganglion, and the short ciliary nerves. The effector organs are the sphincter pupillae muscles of both the eyes and the response is constriction of the pupil in both the eyes. 
Now, you must also know about a condition which is called as the Agile Robertson pupil. In this condition or the condition in which the accommodation reflex is present and the pupillary light reflex is absent is called as the Agile Robertson pupil. That is, in this condition, the pupil response, that is, pupillary constriction occurs in response to accommodation, but not in response to light. So please watch my video on accommodation reflex. I'll put the link above and in the description box below. And remember, in accommodation reflex, it involves the cortex rather than the superior colliculus of the um, superior colliculus or the pretectal nucleus. So in this case, the site of lesion is the midbrain or the pretectal nucleus. And we have seen the fibers mediating the light reflex involve the pretectal nucleus and here they are damaged. And such lesion is seen in case of neurosyphilis. And thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, Simple Concepts in Medical Physiology for more videos.